Maybe you've already gone through that situation in which you could finally download and install that version of your favorite game you were waiting for so long on your PC. But when you started to play it, here I come. The graphics were not what you expected. And even worse, the game ended up crashing repeatedly so that you couldn't enjoy it at all. Maybe you blamed your PC, but you got it all wrong. You needed a technological invention from the most commercially recommended and successful brand on the graphics card market. That would be the main mission of a company born in California in 1993. I'm talking about NVIDIA. NVIDIA currently specializes in the development of graphics processing units and integrated circuit technologies for workstations, personal computers, and mobile devices. With nearly $7 billion in revenue today, the question is, how did this company make it to the top? The story begins with a trio of Jensen Huang, Chris Malachowski, and Curtis Priam. They got together and combined their previous experiences to start up a business. Jensen, who has been CEO of NVIDIA, told a lecture to Stanford students about the first few months after founding the company and the funds obtaining process. One of the funny things about these early days was that almost the only thing they had to deal with was what kind of food to have for lunch or dinner. It was a time when Jensen and read many books about business, increasing income, and attracting investment. Another fun fact was that at the end of the day, Jensen could not present to the venture capitalists a business plan, but he could still persuade them about the project. And here's the thing about this venture capital matter. Raising venture capital is not just about designing the ultimate business plan, but about having a good idea that they can trust and the fact that you are trustworthy and so, the most important thing is your reputation. Jensen Huang was a director at LSI Logic and a CPU designer at AMD. Chris Malachowski worked for Hewlett Packard and Sun Microsystems. And Curtis Priam also had a good resume, having designed IBM's first PC graphics processor and developed Sun Microsystems' GX graphics chip. Something good definitely had to come out of there. These guys simply understood that PC would become mass market as a device to be used to run games, and they just said, let's go for it. The founding team of what was then called NV succeeded in receiving venture capital funding, $20 million to get started in 1993. Pretty amazing. Now, with everything they needed to get started, they developed the NV1 the company's first product. They worked on this project for another year before officially launching it in 1995. The NV1 could run 2D and 3D video, along with integrated audio processing hardware. Although the NV1 project was attractive to Sega, who decided to use it in their Saturn console, NVIDIA would soon realize that the market was in a more complicated situation than they thought. The negative feedback from users was a clear sign that they had to take a better path soon to not fail. Soon NVIDIA began working on its next attempt, NV2. But Sega dropped out of the NVIDIA deal and the NV2 was left in the middle of nowhere, watching NV1 start to fill store shelves because no one wanted to buy them. Sometimes things refused to go the way we planned. The NVIDIA team did not give up and decided to learn from their mistakes to make a new attempt in 1997. This new attempt was a resounding success in the market, achieving 1 million units in the first four months. Undoubtedly, we could see it as the moment when NVIDIA became one of the stars of this universe. By this point in history, the market leadership in the graphics card market belonged to 3DFX. Reva TNT aimed to detonate its main rival 3DFX's Voodoo 2, but although it gained a wide recognition, it could not match it in sales. However, although this was a small step in the evolution of this type of technology, it was a big step for NVIDIA, which the next year began a revolution in the market. In 1999, NVIDIA invented the graphics processing unit, popularly known as GPU. This will make a radical change in the graphics industry, creating a before and after.
the graphics industry changed forever, and NVIDIA began to lead a new trend. Along with this innovation, NVIDIA introduced the NVIDIA Quadro GPU for professional use, making it a favorite among graphic design professionals. Later this year, NVIDIA announces its first public offering at $12 per share. The beginning of the new millennium arrives, and NVIDIA proves that this was just the beginning. They made the decision to buy 3DFX, their former major competitor, and received the news that Microsoft was asking them to be the main supplier of graphics processors for Xbox. And then it all became one success after another for NVIDIA, unquestionably conquering the market. By this time, the beginning of the 21st century was taken seriously by technology and computer companies. And a wave of multiple innovations began in the industry, in which every few years a new product was launched. At the end of 2002, DirectX 9 API arrives to the market, and this unleashes a war between ATI and NVIDIA. But not all battles can be won, and this time the victory went to ATI, which managed to launch the first DirectX 9 compatible graphics cards. NVIDIA engineers said that it's one thing to lose a battle, and another thing to lose the war. So they launched a counteroffensive with the FX 5000 series. However, these were certainly not winning times for Nvidia, as it persisted in underperforming. Don't get it wrong, the business still had other things to celebrate. During this time, it became the fastest growing $1 billion company in the industry and entered the S&P 500. This was a demonstration that NVIDIA was making it in the marketplace, being acknowledged by Fortunate Magazine as the fastest growing company in America, and meeting the goal of selling more than 100 million processors sold. Before continuing with this story, if you're enjoying this video, I invite you to thumbs up a like and subscribe. In 2003, NVIDIA launched a new model, GeForce FX 5800, but user reactions soon appeared, claiming that the new GPU was a dust machine and excessively noisy. Sounds like a demon, said some. There was some controversy over performance, as the technique for raising the FPS was not satisfactory. There was so much disappointment and loss in sales that NVIDIA had to hold an emergency meeting to work on a new project. Nevertheless, the feeling that this was a bad year did not leave the NVIDIA offices and workshops. But to get ahead in the matter, decisions have to be made. In 2004, they launched SLI technology, which was able to multiply the graphics processing power on the CPU. This same year, they announced a collaboration with Blizzard Entertainment for the realization of Worlds of Warcraft, making the game the most popular in the world. But that wasn't all. NVIDIA learned that the road to success requires the right strategic alliances to get the momentum it takes to get to the top. So NVIDIA was asked by NASA to render and reproduce the ground of Mars through the data they had received from the rover robot. NVIDIA transformed all the images into virtual reality to help scientists. This became a major milestone for the company and its entire team. NVIDIA's offices and workshops were now filled with staff who are proud to contribute to scientific progress. Next move, NVIDIA announces the development of the processor that will serve as the basis for Sony's PlayStation 3 game console. There is no doubt that this year, 2006, NVIDIA was giving a complicated check to its competitors and establishing itself as the market leader. NVIDIA had already sold 500 million chips, and decided to acquire Hybrid Graphics, a developer of 2D and 3D rendering software for cell phones. By 2007, NVIDIA was so unstoppable that Forbes magazine named NVIDIA the company of the year for its competitive advantage and astonishing growth rate. In the first quarter of this year, NVIDIA celebrated closing a year with $1 billion in revenue. This increased the company's recognition in the entertainment world, winning an Emmy Award. But the road to the top is not a straight line of steady ascent. There are ups and downs along the way. This time in 2008, Nvidia faced another setback. The company reduced its revenues by $200 million due to a controversy among consumers, 
A large number of GPUs were released with manufacturing defects. Nvidia noticed the problem, but decided not to disclose which graphics cards were affected. But Nvidia didn't stop there. Its foray into major scientific breakthroughs continued to enter the universe of artificial intelligence technologies. Although artificial intelligence was already making great strides in the market prior to Nvidia's foray into this sector, Nvidia's visionary vision led them to invest in these new technologies, which included deep learning. But the problem of defective equipment was not over. NVIDIA faced a massive lawsuit in 2010, when it had to reimburse the owners of the affected notebooks or replace them with working devices. Jump forward to 2012 and we find NVIDIA once again being highlighted by the entertainment industry, this time for being behind the Oscar winners. In 2016, NVIDIA introduced Pascal to lead advances in artificial intelligence. Pascal is one of the most important architectures in NVIDIA's history, making the GTX 1060 one of the best-selling graphics cards in history. After going through all this trajectory as a technology company, NVIDIA consolidated itself as a worldwide giant, covering 80% of the graphics processor market. With research and entertainment going ever so deeply into the metaverse and virtual reality, you can be sure NVIDIA will play a crucial part in shaping our future existence. We might very well be only at the beginning of the company's true story, making the virtual, real and the impossible possible.